Hello, everybody. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Today is, boy, it's the last day of the month. April has, I'm sorry, Mar, gosh, I'm sorry, what month are we in? Good grief. You can tell where my mind is at uh, as far as the week that I've had. So as you, um, yes, April 30th, thank you, the last day of the month. And uh, I'm glad to put this month behind. Uh, though I praise the Lord, I'm, I'm grateful for the gift of life. Sometimes it can be uh, very trying. So, Sorry, what month are we in? Um, I'm going to give it a couple of minutes here. <clears throat> I, second week in a row, no Friday fruit clips. The work schedule has just been very very hard and i have been out virtually from pre-sunrise to well after uh all week so but hopefully that'll change this week so i'm working on some stuff but um let me make sure this is everything is going good so yeah sorry about the no friday fruit clips uh, i if i did this full time this wouldn't be a problem i wish i could um also there was something else and i've got my notes with me tonight um oh i want to i want to give you a warning because tonight's going to be a little bit different um well first of all i'd like to say hello to all of you and thank you for being here let 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 me say uh an opening prayer so father we come in the name of jesus christ we ask that you bless this live stream we ask, Lord, that you would be exalted. We are here because we love you and we thank you for the gift of life, the fact that you sustain us. And when there was no hope, you gave your life. You took our place. You paid the price for us. You shed your blood so that we might live. And we thank you, Jesus. You are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And so we praise you and thank you. God bless this live stream, this fellowship. And may you be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray. We thank you. Amen. So, yeah, a little loopy. Uh, a little bit uh, grumpy this week. I apologize. I'm trying to snap out of it. Uh, glory to God. And so, um, I, I want to tell you tonight that graphic warning. What is, the, what is that? Uh, warning graphic con or content. It is very disturbing what you're going to hear tonight. And this is why, um, you know, this needs to be done. I had uh, thought about, I was, you know, going to just do this as a standalone video, but I just haven't had the time. So I decided uh, the decision, your prayer, just do it on a live stream. Just do it and show the content. And so that's what I'm going to do here tonight. And I, I don't know how good it'll go because I will be reading from notes, but I want to make sure that this gets on. As you know, my channel has zero production value. Who do you think I am, Alabama Woodsman, with all the wacky sound effects and the delightful... Anyway, uh, maybe someday I will when I get time, but uh, I, I, I want to get this information out. So tonight we're talking about... Uh, a lot of people have been asking about the master's voice. The master's voice. Let me, let me see if I have this. Well, we're going to play some clips anyway. Um, they've been asking about uh, Celestial over at the master's voice. And so, <laughs> and so that's where we're going to be featuring tonight. And so, just to preface this a little bit, and again, I apologize for being a little bit loopy. I'm just tired. And so, uh, I'll state this again really quickly. Graphic content ahead. You have been warned. But also, I want to reiterate, I do believe in the gift of prophecy. Why? Well, it's in the Bible. If it's in the Bible, I believe it. A lot of people say that I, you know, that's all I do is attack uh, prophets. No, I don't. I attack false prophets. They're false prophets. And uh, otherwise, I expose them. And so I do believe in the gift uh, of prophecy. So please don't, don't 
leave your nasty comments. Also, uh, to any of the followers of Celestial at the Master's Voice, before you leave your uh, disparaging comments, listen to the video. Don't, you see, that's one of the greatest illusions, one of the greatest problems in these end times is that you have this, what, there really is a woke side of Christianity, and that should never be, or perceived Christianity. You can't have that. Either you want the truth or you don't. And so you can't do the things that they're doing in the world where they deny truth. They don't want to hear evidence. They'll shout you down. They get hurt feelings. What room do we have for hurt feelings? Either you want the truth or you don't. It is just stunning that this, th this should not happen in Christendom. This shouldn't happen in the body of Christ. But because the prophets, these so-called prophets, which brought a lot of this in, they give the ultimatum that either you listen to me or God is A, going to hurt you, or God is going to kill you, God is going to punish you. How dare you question the prophets? They uh, misuse Psalms, I believe it's Psalms 105, touch not God's anointed and do my prophets no harm, which they completely take out of context. They have no understanding of that. The prophets are not gods. They are not divine. They're not real at least the ones we see on, that I pointed out on social media here. Are there any true prophets out there today? Well, I have yet to see one. That doesn't mean they don't exist, but I have yet to see one. But my goodness, the fan clubs and the fanboys and the fangirls who get up and their only option is because they, they actually worship, the, they, they turn these prophets, and this is the irony, even as you'll hear Celestial talk today about idols, she herself has made herself uh, an idol to thousands of people who will, by the way, they will come here and defend her to the death. So this is irony. But so my concern is standing in the truth of Jesus Christ. This is salvation. This is where it's found. This is where we eat, live, breathe right? This is everything we need for salvation. And this is our foundation. So we're going to measure, we're going to, according to 1 John 4, 1, and let's just pop this up there and show that. People say, well, why are you doing this? Well, right here, beloved, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, beloved, believe not every spirit. Don't just believe them because they say there's something special. But what? But try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. You have permission. But these people act like you're blaspheming God simply for doing what the Bible instructs us to do. It's bananas. But we will test. So I, I try to plead with people don't get hurt feelings, and you should love the truth. And so we're going to examine uh, the YouTube channel, The Master's Voice, tonight. And I, and I do have notes ready because I want to make sure that I cover all points on this because this is how important it is. So I'm going to read some of this as I have it. Let me try to... Let me try to scooch, try to scooch. So her name is Celestial, and she claims to be a prophet of the Most High. Now, if this is true, that means she has something to say. But is it true? And let me see if I can. I'm going to split the screen, so I'll already start kind of showing you uh and what i'm going to be doing is i put a bunch of clips together this is from a private video um as i want because i like i said i didn't know whether i was going to make a standalone video but i'll i'll i'm going to use this video to play these clips but her name is celestial and um i've watched several videos of hers 
And I can tell you she's not a prophet. And it's just that simple. And I know if she's watching or if she sees this, she's probably going to get hurt feelings. And I probably will receive threats. Um, I, I heard some of the things that she has said, you know, if you're going to criticize my channel, something to this effect, do it at your own peril because I'm basically because I'm God's chosen prophet. But um, so I'm going to read some stuff. So pro prophecy is a gift of God. Uh, but there's nothing I could find within her body of work that proves any prophecy that she gave, which has come to pass. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. We know this. There are many outstanding prophets from uh, even the New Testament that have not come to pass yet. But um, from what I've seen, I'm just stating that fact. Every, I've not found a prophecy where she gave that has come to pass so right now it's it's kind of hard to measure it from that part now um i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna play this first clip and then we're just gonna comment as we go so here we go i also want to ask you when i play this stuff try not to miss what she says so if you guys are really interested, don't pay attention to the chat. Uh, don't get involved in conversation. I've never asked that before, and I'm not saying that you have to. I'm saying if you really want to know about this, listen very carefully. So I'm going to play this first clip, and then I'm going to go into an introduction. Here we go. Let me make sure I'm split here. These words will vindicate him, for these words don't come from me. I have no ability to make up the almost 400 prophecies. There are almost 400 prophetic words on the master's voice that cover everything under the human sun and things that are taking place past the sun. So these are the Lord's words. These are the Lord's truths. And they are being brought out so that the Lord can gather a people to himself. These things. Okay. I want to come back to the chat because I want to make sure that the volume is good, that you guys can hear this. So when you hear me say this, please give me a thumbs up. Um, but what we heard her say there, and this is very disturbing. I'm going to try to move my mic down in front so you guys can hear me. I'll just keep it right here. Uh, she said, as you heard, she claims to have been given over 400 prophecies oops let me split this back here now she is uh she has claimed to be given over 400 new prophecies which she says came from god almighty and she's not done she's got more to come now she by her own words said that she has more to come now she also said that she has no ability to make this up she has no ability really she has no ability to make this up that, that's just i i always marvel but you see that the the false prophets they use this term a lot remember lois vogel sharp there's no way that these rhymes could come from me there's just no way. They're just too fantastic. And everybody is like, no, they, they actually could come from a five-year-old child. That having to do with Lois Vogel Sharp. But I love how they say this, that there's, just like she said, she had no ability to make these up. I think after you'll hear tonight, yes, there's, it's, that's the only thing that did happen is that you did make them up. Now, maybe this is... Uh, Another option, because I want to give options. I'm not trying to be mean to Celestial. Um, if she didn't make them up, and she's saying that God did, no. My other alternative would be that someone or something else made these up, because it wasn't God. And I'm going to show you more so about the doctrine that she preaches also. Um, so that's the other option, because I'm trying to be nice here. Now, if you... Uh, if you do and believe, if you do indeed believe that she's he heard from God, and that these are actual new words from God, that means that these new words are to be equally revered as this right here. 
Do you understand that? If in fact, and I, and I think that a lot of these social media prophets, they don't realize the trouble they're in. If you believe that Celestial's 400 new prophecies from God are from God, then they are to be revered equally with this right here. This is the truth. They are words of God. We need to get a, an additional book or at 400, that's going to be a, you know, a lot of chapters in the book of Celestial. And that's the problem if you think about this. And this is where the, these social media prophets, they, they don't really think before they do these things. And, and, and again, very, very questionable. Um, she is, as you'll find out, she's heavy on dreams. Dreams, 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 a lot of dreams. And she's heavy on death. Heavy, heavy on death. And, you know, it's kind of interesting. Um, I want you, as you watch my video tonight, and we're going to play some clips. This might run a little bit long. Um, but I found some troubling and questionable things on just, this is really what I found. It wasn't so much... the authenticity of whether it's a prophecy or not, I more so found out the disturbing doctrine that she teaches. And this includes right across the realm. Um, so troubling and questionable things on top of everything else. And for the record, um, when she does preach the gospel, wonderful. I love it. Uh, you know, and again, I, I wish she would just do that. But all false prophets, they mix in uh, Alabama Woodsman. I just peeked over and saw his comment. They mix in truth with their fantasies, with their false prophecies, and this is the problem. So you can listen to what I found tonight. The other part is this. Now, first, I'm going to take you over and I'm going to show you her website. So, ah. Uh, Boy, this is going to be hard to see. I'm going to try to... I'm going to scooch, scooch me out of here. And I don't know. I'm going to try to get this over here. So here's the tabs. Here's the tabs at the top. Now, I will tell you. Boy, she has got one of the most impressive websites. It is truly truly impressive but as we scroll through this you can see i'm not sure if that's showing up there yeah heavy on the ufos heavy heavy on the nephilim um I just want so you guys can see this. Uh, gray aliens, ancient aliens, and and uh, again, I told you I was going to take my time. This is going to seem kind of fuddled up, fuddled up, but oh, right here. Let me uh, make sure that I show this to you. So. Uh, I don't know why that's doing that. Zombies and aliens. <laughs> so, now, and again, I'm just scrolling through so you can get, uh, she talks about werewolves. Uh, when, I guess they're called Wendigos. She also talks about mermaids uh, and, and just heavy on the creatures. And um here we go humanoids and serpent people i want to make sure that you can see that now i actually heard her say that she doesn't believe in the serpent seed but here serpent people so i guess, I guess that doesn't matter per se whether she believes that happened in the uh the garden of eden of course we know it's nonsense but yet she still teaches and preaches humanoids and serpent people so she's heavy on this, but let me come back up to the top because I always want to show you something. And that is this right here. 
Oops, let me get over here. Like I said, this website is very impressive. Now here, it's always telling. Here you can support her with Cash App or PayPal. And we know every good profit, they got to get paid, right? And of course, we joke about this. This is very troubling. For what reason are you being paid, Celestial? What are you doing that requires PayPal support? Do you have an outside ministry? You're a prophet of God, so you say. But it's, again, it's very telling. It's very telling. And so, again, her website's very extensive, very impressive. Um, but as we looked through this, now, this is also what I want to, let me go back to uh, the homepage here. Oh, where did it go? When you look at this stuff, now, and you're looking at aliens and humanoids and lizard people and zombies, chimeras, mermaids, all this stuff, right? I don't necessarily disagree with everything that she says in the fact, not the fact, but in the, you know, uh, possibility that stuff like this may come on the earth. I don't necessarily disagree. I, some would call these conspiracy theories. Some would call these speculations. I think speculations is a good description. I speculate. I don't necessarily think it's wrong to speculate on possibilities. What are the possibilities that A, B, and C can happen? I think there's necessarily anything wrong the trouble comes when you put a, when you slap a thus saith the Lord and then call your speculations prophecies. That's where the trouble comes. And that is gross. That is very, very gross. When you're telling the masses of your speculations and you place a thus saith the Lord in front of those speculations, and call them prophecies, and say that they are from God Almighty. And before any of Celestial's followers come here again, I want to say this, and tell me, oh, how dare you touch not God's anointed, just save it. Here's what I really want to say to that. Let me offer you a counter warning to Celestial and to the followers. I'm going to quote from Hebrews 10.31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That is my warning to you who think that Celestial is a true prophet and that I'm doing some kind of harm to her. You are out of line. And for anybody to come to... Let me get this back up here, sorry. For anybody to come here and say these types of things, you know what, let me go, I lost that whole thing, I don't know. Let me open up a new tab. Uh, boy, I don't know if I, hold on guys. Give me just a second. Can you guys still hear me? Something just happened there. Sorry about that. All right, so my whole thing just went down. So I had to come back in. So hopefully you guys can still hear me. But th the warnings that are, are given 
uh, to me. I, I actually want to put my own warning back. And again, sorry about this. And I know that I'm all over the place here. Uh, because for anybody to come out and say, thus saith the Lord, uh, when God is not speaking, that's got to be one of the most terrifying things you could ever see or could ever say to me. I, I can't imagine coming out and telling thousands of people, thus saith the Lord, and when, when in fact God is not saying anything through you, uh, be warned. That is a fearful thing. Please take warning and stop doing this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fire up the clips here. I just have to get this back because this whole thing just fell down on me. Give me just a second. Almost there. Okay. I want to make sure you can see that okay. I'm going to slide this back over here. All right, so we're going to play. I'm going to let this first part play. Let me, uh, let me scooch it up a little bit here. Now, again, remember that I warned you, graphic content. Very disturbing. I'm just queuing it up here. These are the Lord's words, these are the Lord's truths, and they are being brought out so that the Lord can gather a people to himself, these things. But this is what the Lord said. The Lord said that the singer known as Beyonce is going to die. So God has said a lot about this woman. I have not even published everything because of time. I will publish. What do you, what do you suppose that is? God has said a lot about this woman. Do you, you think God has said a lot about about Beyonce. Why do you suppose that is? Why, why do you think God has said a lot about Beyonce? Well, he hasn't. Uh, as you're going to find out, Celestial is, is extremely obsessed with Beyonce. And, and I, I don't blame her. Beyonce is a sick individual. She is a Satanist. And again, this, remember, you're, we, are, we are calling for the difference between speculation and actual prophecy. Celestial is a speculator, and she slaps a prophecy label on it. Celestial doesn't, really doesn't like Beyonce, and that's fine for that. Um, but here she says, God has really been talking a lot about Beyonce. Because, you know... I, I can't, I, I got nothing here. Publish it when I have the time. So these are the things the Lord said, and these are the people he named, and these are the visions that I saw. Beyonce will die. All the people I named to you will die and be taken away. Tony Evans, T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, Joyce Meyer, Benny Hinn, and more will all pass away. So, all right, so here she, she just simply says that Beyonce, Tony Evans, T.D. Jakes, Joyce Meyer, uh, Creflo Dollar, they're just going to die. This is true. Everybody's going to die. See, she gives no date. You say, well, there's many instances in the Bible where God didn't give it. This is true. But I think in the context that she's talking about, this should be something that happens fairly soon. Uh, Joyce Meyer, I believe she's in her 80s. Uh, I think uh, T.D. Jakes is up. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I could be. I think T.D. Jakes is right around 70-ish. Um, Creflo Dollars, no spring chicken. Beyonce lives a lifestyle of debauchery. It's, it wouldn't be a shocker if she did die. Uh, she, I'm sure that woman is probably actually tormented also. But she said that God told her that they're going to die. That, that's very generic, isn't it? It's very general. She seems so sure of herself. I don't know why you get out here and you say, hey, guess what, everyone? People are going to die. Thus saith the Lord. Are people going to go, oh, wow. It's so profound. I mean, 
what this does is she has an open avenue. If it happens, she can say, see, I told you. What about the others? They haven't died. Well, that's still ongoing. It's ongoing. So it's very convenient when they do this. It's not impressive. So I'd have to say, no, that's not, a, that's not an actual thing there. That's not a prophecy. Um, all right, I'll keep going here. Now, now listen closely. They will no longer be a snare to the world or trap for people. And so this is what the Lord had to say about the sodomy ritual. The sodomy ritual makes people bleed. And one of the people that the Lord says bleeds from the backside when this is done, because I will explain how it is done. I'm not leaving anything out here is Beyonce. Write these things that I told you about Beyonce and that she Now, did you hear what she said there? This was God speaking. Let's see, 128. Listen to what she says here. Anything out here is Beyonce. Write these things that I told you about Beyonce. And she says that God says, write these things that I told you about Beyonce. Why? Why? This is the word of God? Beyonce is, a, is an actual Luciferian Satanist. Everybody knows it. She lives and practices debauchery. Why is it important, you think, that God had... in this? Remember, people have... I don't know if they have just this small image of who God is, that he's front and center, or even that this should matter, that God Almighty, which in a world of dying, killing... No, no, he's focused on Beyonce and the sodomy ritual. And he, he's coming to Celestial here and saying, write these things that I tell you about Beyonce. It's just... No! No! Do you know how many performers have come and gone? The, this is just the latest batch of this generation's evil people and it has no bearing on your faith or my faith. Now, many people might say, yeah, but Drew, there's people out there that worship Beyonce. This is true. The word of God is available to them. They know. I can't see where what she's about to say will have any impact. So let's listen. That she bleeds from the buttocks. That blood is sacrifice blood. It is the evidence of her sacrifice that I gave you the warning for graphic content, that she bleeds from the buttocks. This is important that you know this, that she bleeds from the buttocks, and the blood is the evidence that she sacrifices to the Baphomet. So when you think about this, now try to apply logic to what you're listening to here. Is this holy prophecy? No, it's not. So she actually said to her listeners that God instructs you to write these things that I tell you about Beyonce, that she bleeds from the buttocks, and that this is evidence that she sacrifices to the Baphomet. Now, my question is, evidence for who? Who needs this evidence? Were there people out there who saw blood on Beyonce's buttocks and said, What's this? Oh, don't you know? It's evidence that she sacrifices to the Baphomet. <laughs> it's just... This is celestial speculation. Celestial's speculation. It, 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 and to me, it, it's extremely disturbing that this woman would come on proclaiming to speak for God this type of graphic content, knowing also that, that teenagers and other kids do listen to this, to speak about such things, such unholy and unnecessary things. How is this going to build the faith of somebody? Now again, I, I want to reiterate, sometimes I speculate uh, it's to point you back to Jesus Christ. I don't see how, I mean, everybody knows what's going on in Hollywood and the music industry. You may disagree. 
I think this is just absolutely sick. To the Baphomet God, Hollywood. That place is a sodomite town. That's what they do there. They have sex in the butt. <laughs> Sacrifice to the Baphomet God, Hollywood. That place is a sodomite town. That's what they do there. They have sex in the butt. Hey. <laughs> It's it's amazing. Hollywood is a Hollywood is a sodomite town. Everybody knows. That's what the, she said. This this is God speaking. That's what they do there. They have sex in the butt. Do you believe that? Do you believe God is saying this stuff? And and if you do believe that God is saying that. How? I would like to meet the person that that helped. That, you know, I, I wasn't sure what was happening in Hollywood, but somehow my faith was empty until I found out, until I came to Celestial's channel and she told me something that my soul needed to hear to build my faith in Jesus Christ. And she confirmed that Hollywood, Hollywood is a sodomite town and that they have sex in the butt. <laughs> That's what they do there. This was God saying that. Unbelievable. It's... I'm sorry that this is... Again, I warned you that this is graphic. Almost all of them have done it. They line the women up and they sleep with them in a running train. And they have blood on their penises. Did you hear that? This is the holy word of God. How is this prophecy? How is this prophecy? More so, while she speaks these words, everybody listening to her, now her videos, this 20, 40, some even higher, thousands of videos, what she's causing the listener to do is to paint a mental image in their mind of running trains and what, I, I didn't want to say what she just said. It's, it's just crazy. They're painting mental images of this. More, it's, it's, it's not prophecy. This is unholy. This is graphic and pornographic, quite frankly. And just hang with me, it gets worse. But she's causing people to paint mental images and mental scenes of what's happening there acts of debauchery now there's one more thing i want you to consider also these women and men here, here's what i need you to understand these women and men who go to hollywood or to the music industry and they are in these types of situations where they're going to these types of auditions and these I, I guess these parties where they are lined up and uh forced not forced but they they're required to do these things for fame and fortune these women and men that do this stuff they're not forced to do that nobody's holding to a, a, a gun to their head to go to these places these are uh narcissistic selfish people that are quite aware of what they're doing they're going to Hollywood. They're pursuing fortune and f fame. They tell themselves, I'm going to be famous no matter what. And they're quite aware. In many instances, they're required to do these, we know, satanic rituals. People sell their souls. We know this. I talk about this all the time. And again, the difference here between somebody like Celestial and me is, I don't slap a thus saith the Lord over mine. We speculate. And for the most part, there have been thousands of testimonies and articles written and news stories done on such satanic practices. But here she has God Almighty saying such things. 
But these women who go to these parties are well aware of what they're doing. They're not being forced. I mean, not unless you're talking about a different subject like sex trafficking. This is not what she's talking about. They're quite aware of what they're doing. So again, it's, it's just nonsensical. When they finish, and the women are usually broken and ashamed, shivering and in a lot of pain by the time it's done. And I actually... So the women are broken and shamed and in a lot of pain by the time it's done. And yet they stay. And yet they go back for more ritual debauchery. I don't know at this point if she if she's trying to clamor to the viewer to feel sympathy for these women. They choose to do these things. And they, you know, I'm not sure all the time, not exactly how it's yours, but they're rewarded with film contracts or record deals, so on and so forth. This is a process all parties have signed off on. So I'm not sure if she's trying to, to drum up sympathy. I actually saw this being done. The Lord says, as their backsides are burning and clenching in pain, the studio executives will tell them, will be in touch. And you see how exact the Lord is, because in the prophecy... Listen to what she said. Do you see how exact the Lord is? Again, she is attributing this to the words of God Almighty. God is with celestial telling her stories of debauchery. And I'm pretty sure this was a vision, I think she's going to, a vision that she saw. So let's let her finish. What you never heard before, part one. This is exactly what I saw being done. I see this is what I saw being done. God is, if you believe celestial, God is showing her pornographic scenes. This isn't like Ezekiel where God took Ezekiel and said, come, I'll show you greater abominations. And he showed them men who were worshiping other idols and other gods. This is God saying, hey, Celestial, come here, look at this. There's a train of women. Look at those guys sitting in those chairs there. Look what they're doing. They're sodomizing them. See the blood on there. It's just so disturbing. It's my warning, says the Lord. Ain't no sex produces a slave listen to this it is because in the prophecy what you never heard before part one this is exactly what i saw being done this is my warning says the lord anal sex produces a slave so she just said this is my warning says the lord anal sex produces a slave did anybody need that tidbit did anybody need that alleged word from the Lord? Does it matter? Anal sex is not good. Anal sex is sinful. Anal sex, I mean, I, I'm just at an absolute loss here. Why, why this woman would come forth and say such profane things that add nothing to yours or my faith. And she attributes this filth to coming from the mouth of God and this woman who loves to intimidate and cause people to think that she is some mighty prophet of God is saying such nonsense and sadly people believe it it's it's actually kind of heartbreaking isn't it so this is my warning, says the Lord. Anal sex produces a slave. And I share. Somebody write that down. Should we write that down in a book? Should we, should we add that to this? It's the word of the Lord. Surely, if you're going to document these, that, that's, a, that's a chapter and a verse somewhere. And this is my warning, saith the Lord, anal sex produces a slave. Unbelievable. A dream um, in a recent video. I'm not sure if I did it in a video or if it's just on the blog where I, I, had, I, I had a dream where I was caught on a cross line, two very high powered men in Washington, D.C. And from the conversation, I was able to hear that one of these men had taken another man 
either to do the ritual on him, man A did it to man B, or took him to a place where the ritual was done on him, and he was calling him the next day to check on him, and the man was saying, I'm not doing too good at all. I, I'm not well. I'm not feeling well. I'm not feeling good. And I was thinking, well, why would you? Because your male body was not created for that. But then while they were on that call, sexually, they began to please themselves on both ends of the line. And so I'm caught in this cross line listening to two men doing whatever they're doing to themselves. The first thing I... Is that just unbelievable? So try to understand what she just told you. And again, just so important that the viewers hear this, that in some vision or something, she was caught on in between a telephone call listening two men on the line who began to sexually themselves and she was forced to listen really she said i was caught on a line is that from god would god ordain that you be a witness to this listening to two men practice debaucherous sinful things would god ordain that I'm trying to think of how that could have benefited her if she says, I mean, if, if God, I, I, and I run through all the scenarios, how can this be edifying? It's not. It's sick. She's talking about phone sex between two men. She was caught there listening. She had to listen to that. Somehow God needed her to sit there and witness that. I saw was actually the running train. I saw a line of naked women that were bending over with their backsides exposed to men who were sitting in, what is it? Armchairs, yes, those expensive leathery armchairs. They were sitting fully naked, these men. They were smoking cigars, and these women... <laughs> she's, she's doing the, the whole acting out with the cigars. This <laughs> is... I'm I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. She says that God is showing her this stuff. And that there's a running train of naked women bending over. And he, and, and again, what purpose does this serve? I warned you guys that this was graphic. Are made to line up in front of them. So this is this is young starlet. This is established women in the industry who are being called back for the next ritual. These people are not going to respect star status. I want to, I want to, maybe I'll take a poll here. Does, is anybody out there that is listening to these stories of horrifying debauchery in Hollywood and or in the music industry, was anybody just oblivious, unaware of any of these sexual perverted acts was there anybody that that can you know say in the chat room i had no idea hollywood was like this or the music industry i i would venture to bet to guess that there's if there is there's a couple everybody knows remember in the old days this was called the casting couch we, we, we read a couple of years ago about Harvey Weinstein and how bad it was with him. Everybody knows. But still, she, she finds this is... Ugh. All right, let's let her listen. To them, you are not a star. You are just on-call flesh. And so these women were made to line up in front of the men, and then these men... The, the women were not made to line up. Again, not unless she's describing sex trafficking or sex slaves. The women volunteered their lives. They, they either made a deal with the devil or this was required for fame and fortune. They were not made to line up. She's, she's actually, and again, this is what's partly so telling about this. She's describing consenting partners of orgies for the purpose of fame and fortune. I, I, so there is no purpose in sharing this. And were abusing them in the backside. And the way that they were doing it is a man would abuse a woman and then just move to the next woman. And so I give these prophecies as I receive them. I can't soften them.
She says, I give these prophecies as I receive them. Is that a prophecy? <laughs> Is that to, it, it's, it sounds like she, what she saw was in the past. It's already been fulfilled. It's to be fulfilled. Or I don't, I guess I don't understand prophecy. I give these prophecies as I see them. So somebody, she says God is showing her these Hollywood and music industry orgies. Bunch of naked men sitting around in chairs. They got the stogies out. Line the girls up. Sodomize them. It's... I... I, I give these prophecies as I see them. It is unbelievable. Them. They are as I have seen. And I will say what I have seen. Actually, you shouldn't say what you have seen. You've seen, you've seen these things. They did, you didn't see them from God. But she's, she's very adamant. I, I will say what I've seen. And she doesn't even bother to ask herself why. Why would you say this? It's not from God. It's not from God. And there is still more to say. It is time to open secrets so that people can know the truth and be free. It is time to open these secrets so people can know the truth and be free? How is that making you free? How is that making anybody free? Was somebody trapped somewhere? I, I'm just struggling. I've got to know what's happening in Hollywood. And then she comes out and the guy's like, oh, I've been set free. I've been set free by... Celestial's pornographic des descriptions of what really happens in Hollywood. I'm so free. No. Now people might say, well, that, that's these girls. The girls need to hear this. There's got to be a, a better way to do this than to broadcast this in, in front of 20 to 30,000 people who are not involved in this. But this is not prophecy. Everybody knows what's happening in that junk Hollywood so it's not that I disagree with her that this stuff happens again it's when she slaps a thus saith the Lord in front of all this like the Lord is really going to come and say uh, thus saith the Lord the you know saith the Lord anal sex makes you a slave oh my goodness it's crazy and he said to me again stand back and allow this judgment and never reach out again to try and convince the holdouts. When you speak, leave it there. Let it be. Let them alone. This is where we get into the doctrine part, which is extremely disturbing. Now, what she's saying is she's having a conversation with God right now, and that he's telling her to, as you hear this, to no longer care about basically answering questions, witnessing the gospel, even to the point of um, somebody who might challenge her. But listen carefully. See, this is the part where you can know she's not from God. Listen. Whether they heard you or they didn't hear you, whether they accept what you say or they accuse you of corruption, hatred, of judging them, leave them alone. In a very short time, indeed, there will be greater problems afoot. They will lose everything. The government is preparing to make an announcement that there is nothing on the U.S. balance sheets. The government knows that there is nothing. And they know that the USA is broke. They sure. will dissolve paper money and the U.S. dollar will cease, cease to be the reserve of the world. It will go into obscurity and become useless in the end. Focus on your own life and do not try to rescue anyone anymore. Focus on your own life and do not try to rescue anyone anymore is one of the most insulting lies that this woman um, could have uttered, I think. Maybe that's the wrong way to say it. Or, or I should say one of the most telling proofs that she is nowhere near the gospel. She says that God 
is saying this. Focus on your own life and do not try to rescue anyone anymore. World. It will go into obscurity and become useless in the end. Focus on your own life and do not try to rescue anyone anymore. Is that just atrocious? Who, what Christian, what lover of Christ, what appreciator of the blood of Jesus Christ would ever say something like that? I, I've got to get to my notes because this was so upsetting. Do not try to rescue anyone anymore. This, um, God would be defying his own word. Um, I'm going to read a couple of verses here. I want to read these, and you can write these down if you're interested. Look what it says. I guess I should bring these up because it's important that we see these. Can that ever be a thing where God would tell you to focus on yourself? That is like the opposite of what Holy Scripture tells us. We're in 2 Timothy. Look what it says in verse 1. I charge thee. Let me make sure. Oops. Let me make sure this is. Uh, you guys can see that. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and, and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Where in there does it even hint that you should give up? Now, of course, many will come and cite, well, you, you know, what about reprobates? What about when they're leaving the towns and won't hear them and Jesus said to shake the dust? Really? Okay. Is that this right now? What she's talking about is people who might say, you know, I don't believe what you're saying. What do you mean about this? Who might have questions? That's what she's talking about. She doesn't like to answer questions. She doesn't like to be challenged. So this one is 2 Timothy 4. But I also want to take you, and I'm just going to share a couple because there's just so many, into Titus. Look what it says in verse 9. Titus chapter 1, verse 9. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may by, be able by sound doctrine to both exhort and convince the gainsayers. Are we supposed to, I want you to remember this verse, convince the, ga the uh, gainsayers. How? Well, with sound doctrine. Holding fast the faithful word. That's amazing. Are we supposed to convince the gainsayers? Absolutely. Let's take the challenge. Why? Because there's souls on the line. There are people going to hell for all eternity. We take that time, no matter how your feelings might be hurt. There is no chance that God is coming and saying, focus on yourself and do not try to help them anymore. Categorically satanic. If that's your attitude, or if you think you heard that, shut down the channel. You are worthless. You are not producing fruit. You have chosen to leave grapes on the line to rot and go to hell. Focus on yourself and don't help anyone anymore. Unbelievable. You can also check Acts 20.28 20, for reference. I'm just going to give you a couple. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. If somebody has an objection, answer it. Convince them. Share your expertise in the Bible, Celestial. You're a prophet. You're among one of the high, allegedly one of the highest callings of God. And you're going to tell them, nope, I've got to take care of myself. I'm not going to answer your questions.
not going to try to help you. What about 1 Peter chapter 3, 15? And then we'll move on here. I appreciate your patience. But the Word of God is the most important for all of us. So 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Let me make sure this is up here. It says, But sanctify the Lord God in your heart, and be ready always to give an answer to every man. When? When are we supposed to be ready? Always. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Is there a five-question limit? Is there two questions? You've asked too many questions now. I'm going to focus on myself, and I'm not going to try to help you anymore. How utterly blasphemous. It is the opposite of the gospel. Do you believe God told her that? Do you believe that God told her that? I don't believe that. But it gets worse. So the Lord came to me in my sleep where I was hot with fury. She was hot with fury. This dream that he was showing me and watch. Listen to this anymore. So the Lord came to me in my sleep where I was hot with fury, watching this dream that he was showing me and watching, showing me in the dream what is actually my daily experience. And he said to me, now do you see? Now do you finally understand what I told you from the beginning? They are exactly as I described them to you. Who's they? She says that God came to her and was saying, Now do you see? Now do you understand? They are as exactly as I described them. It is unbelievable. You hard-hearted people who do not believe so here the lord has gathered celestial come here girl you're my girl and then said look at all them now do you see how evil they are they not you celestial you're not part of they you're you're my prophetess you're different i want you to see jesus saying this apparently god now do you see how they are how evil how hard-hearted they are she's causing a separation between people and her she's not like you or you or you or you she's different she's not part of they see how special she is and she says that god is saying this that god is thoroughly I don't know, almost surprisingly disgusted with us. Almost, you almost think of the Israelites out in the desert, the Sinai Desert, right? We remember that case where, uh, I'm going to paraphrase, God said, get out of the way, Moses, I'm going to smite these people. What did God, or what did Moses do? No, Moses went into prayer. No, Lord, no, God, please don't. What would other nations say? And Moses uh, was mediating on behalf of the Israelites, and God was merciful, but not not celestial. She's different, as you'll find out. Do not try to explain anything to them anymore. Here it is again. Do not try to explain anything to them anymore. Do you think that God Almighty is saying this? But absolutely stand back and let the judgment proceed again. Absolutely stand back and let the judgment proceed. This, let me tell you something about Celestial. This woman hates people. She hates people. And she is unmerciful, filled with hate. Against them. And when the Lord broke into my sleeping experience, I felt so much comfort from the mockery that I was watching taking place. And from the armor-plated response that comes to this word, he said, stand back and never again get in the way of my judgments by responding to them, by trying to explain things to them. No explaining. Don't respond to them. Okay? This is God telling Celestial. By trying to show them 
who I am. Because apparently the Bible, not good enough. Celestial, by all what she's saying here, she's admitting she has failed in the calling of being the prophet who was apparently trying to explain she couldn't do it. So here, this is an, an admission of failure of and by Celestial. But remember, she's saying she felt relief now, and watch this. By trying to explain to them what my reasons are for doing what I say I will do. And the Lord was showing So me, let me uh, try this. He said, stand back and never again get in the way of my judgments. Hold on, bear with me. Them, by trying to explain things to them, by trying to show them who I am by trying to explain to them what my reasons are for doing what I say I will do. And the Lord was showing. So she said that she had felt such joy and relief that she wasn't going to have to explain God to them anymore because they are apparently so stupid, so dumb, and not nearly as intelligent as celestial. Just so stupid, stupid people that God came and said, you know what? They're too stupid, Celestial. Don't try to explain. And so Celestial felt relief because she's out of the game. She took herself out of the battle so she could breathe a little bit. I don't have to explain to these stupid people how God is with me, with me, with me, and not with them, so on and so forth. It's exactly that me that when he breaks the continental shelf under the united states of america and this entire land mass goes down never again to be seen to the bottom of the ocean exactly as he has been saying since 2019 that the fate of america will be the fate of atlantis so here she says that America, this was a prophecy that America was going to break in half and be submerged under the ocean. Now, this was a prophecy. Now, it wasn't so much that, you know, this could happen, right? The, just the fact that she compared it to Atlantis was very kind of troubling. Atlantis, a mythical uh, land. I just found that kind of telling. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see whether America will be broken in half and uh, be submerged under the ocean. There are creatures underneath the water. And the Lord says to tell you that they will come out in the final days and consume humanity upon... By the way, she's in consume... Consume humanity. There are creatures under the water that are going to come out and consume humanity humanity this is what she says god is saying now again i don't have any problem with speculation speculate all you want it's a possibility it could happen creatures from under the water but when you're talking about thus saith the lord this is where this is a problem the earth that I'm an adult, they come with full force, and they also come with the Lord. So this one's kind of long, but stay with this if you guys really want to. This is kind of kind of goofy, but just I think this goes on for about two minutes. But just listen to this. Lord's voice explaining the reason <clears throat> why creatures like aliens and creatures like. That tall, furry creature that is called the abominable snowman. I think it might have another name. Yeti. Yes. Thank you. Yeti. And creatures such as one that I recently learned of in September last year, which is called a Wendigo. Never heard of such a thing in my life. As I think a, 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 a Wendigo is like a humanoid werewolf type thing. Just FYI. <laughs> well as undead creatures that we will discuss in today's prophetic message. Undead creatures. Actual undead creatures. Look at her. But she sounds good. She's wearing a head covering. 
this must be from God. I was very shocked. And I was at pains to explain when the Lord first revealed this to me, I, I was at pains to explain that from what I have seen and from what the Lord has told me, it is not every person who takes the injectable that is going to. Now, I want you to read this. I'll read it to you. She's saying that some who have received the vax, you know, the jib jab, will turn into actual zombies at some point in the future. Listen closely. Undergo this shift, undergo this change, <clears throat> not at all. It seemed to be only some, but the problem is that every time I have these dreams and every time I have this, these visions, the number is in the millions of millions. So the number is so shockingly great. So many people that it should be clear to us. And this is how I explained it because this is how it was explained to me. All means all. But when someone says, will arise from among, like it says the beast that rose from the sea. So it came from a certain place and it is one of many things. In the scripture, when it says arise from the sea, it means that the beast will actually arise from the great mass of humanity. The Messiah was also like that. He was here as a man just like us, but when it was time for him to fulfill Messiah destiny, he arose from our midst and then manifested and fulfilled his destiny as Messiah. And so these who have taken these are a set. So it is a great set. And then from among them, so out of their midst, out of this great number, millions of millions of millions will arise those who, when perhaps the word is triggered or when coming into contact with whatever is going to activate what they carry, it is those who changed, excuse me, please. It is those who changed and manifested this reanimate. Now, a little bit about reanimate. So reanimated, that's zombies. So in essence, and, I, and, and again, this was one of the longer clips, but she's saying that those who took the vaccine at some point in the future, when they pop a trigger, they're going to turn into zombies. She says, this is from the Lord. Now, again, Speculation, there's a lot of uh, conspiracy theorists, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with possibilities. And, and again, trying to be very careful here, certainly the freedom of speech. But again, when you say, thus saith the Lord, this is where there's a problem. And that's what she's doing. The actual undead will roam the earth. They are extremely dangerous. The Lord was talking to me about them as I was setting up the camera and everything and telling me, Celestial, make it known that they hunt in packs. They the Lord said, <laughs> the Lord said, Celestial, make it known. Just, and by the way, it's, isn't it just amazing what a casual conversation? Hey, uh, Celestial, by the way, uh, when you're doing your video, just let it be known that they hunt in packs. The zombies, they hunt in packs. Important tidbit, it'll help a lot of people when the time comes. Okay, Lord. They hunt in packs. <laughs> you know who, uh, what other zombies hunt? Yeah, remember uh, The Walking Dead? Was it, wasn't that a TV show? Yeah, The Walking Dead, right? They hunted in, did they hunt in packs? I don't know if they hunted in packs. Maybe that was conditioning. Maybe it will happen. Again. But it's when you say, thus saith the Lord, that's the problem. Hunt in packs. He says that they do hunt on their own, so you can count on encountering a lone reanimate. A, lethal... <laughs> a lone reanimate. All right, now, okay, so they hunt in packs and also alone. Okay, now I need you to listen to this next part, because this is where real trouble comes in. So I'm gonna back it up a little bit and then listen very closely. The hunt impacts. 
He says that they do hunt on their own, so you can count on encountering a lone reanime. A people ask questions like, should we kill them? And my answer is, honestly, what do you think? If you were to come across a rabbit dog or a wolf in the woods, and it's the dog or you, doesn't matter that this particular dog stands upright and looks like your Uncle Matthew. That's funny. So did you hear what she said there? People have asked, this is her, she said, people have asked me, well, Celeste, what do I do? Should I kill them? And she said, well, what do you think? If you were to come across a rabid dog and it's you or him, what do you think? Now, the trouble here is that Something's going to happen here. And this is why you have to be aware, very aware of the absolute insane influence these social media prophets have over people. Because here's what's going to happen. Somebody's listening to Cel Celestial scare the living feces out of them. And now they're out peeking out their windows looking for zombies. Celeste is a prophet of God. The zombies are coming. It could happen any second. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to be sitting down at your table, drinking a nice mocha latte chocagate, and you're sipping on it. It's a wonderful day. And then you're going to hear a shotgun blast. And you're going to spill your coffee, and you're going to run outside. And there's your neighbor, Earl standing on his front porch with a smoking shotgun. And you look down, and there's your other neighbor, Steve. Steve is in a piled, bloody mess with half of his head missing. And you look at Earl, and you say, What are you doing, Earl? Well, I thought he was a zombie. I was watching Celestial. She said they're coming. And if they, you know, if they come, they, you better kill them. Better, you know, she said that thing about a rabbit dog. And so then there's Earl, killed Steve. This is the type of thing that can happen. And I pray that it doesn't. This is the influence that these prophets have. People are going to do these things. Now, Steve was coming over to borrow some sugar. Maybe Steve sneezed. I don't know. This type of stuff is going to happen. <clears throat> it's it's going to be... This is the type of influence they have. I want to make sure that I've read all my notes here. We have come to the time where God is opening up all the knowledge, everything that was secret, everything that most of us have been conditioned not to believe. And yet this knowledge has been carefully shepherded and carefully kept and passed down generation to generation in other circles, usually esoteric circles, usually witchcraft circles, usually um, satanic circles, they have the knowledge that these things that God is revealing and making known to us here on the master's voice are real and that we will be the losers, us in the church, as well as any person who may not have a particular religious background or may feel that they don't need to follow any God because they're doing just fine on their own. Anyone who does not actually have a knowledge of the things that God wants people to know. If you come to this channel and you begin to hear these things, know that the Lord is speaking them not to shock you or not to say, ooh, I have this brand new piece of knowledge now. God is revealing these things for safety, for protection, and to... So if you got what she was saying there, this was one of the most disturbing aspects of what she was saying there, that the knowledge that witches... And let me get to the uh, secret societies, Satanists, witches. Uh, she actually said that they have shepherd, shepherded esoteric secrets. And now it's coming forth and God's going to reveal this to us so that we can be safe. And, and this was one of the most disturbing things. This is not 
true. I can assure you that there is no esoteric knowledge that you need to get your hands on apart from what's written in this Bible. Right? This was very troubling. This was very troubling. Um, Satanists shepherding esoteric secrets that, that God's bringing forth to us? That's just bananas. It's just bananas, and it's just not true. As Daniel talked about an, an increase in knowledge, of course, this has to do with everything that's happening in the world to include technology, science, so on and so forth. But is there anything that can outmatch the word, the, the word of God? Is there anything that we need in addition to our Holy Bible? Specifically, stuff that witches have their hands on, that Satanists have their hands on, secret societies? I say no. Absolutely not. But very troubling. Very troubling indeed uh, that this woman would say something like this. I just want to check my notes. It was the most disturbing part of that clip was how she described she almost seemed thankful to the secret societies, these anti-Christ organizations, as she she attributed the word shepherding. They have shepherded this information, which is going to be brought, I don't know, you know, kind of hard to understand, but brought to us or that God was going to make us aware of this so that, you know, I think she almost alluded to the fact that if you're not aware of this, you're not going to be able to survive. No, I, I wholeheartedly disagree with Celestial here. You don't need that. What you need is your Bible. What you need is the word of the God, the word of God, the word of our God. So I'm going to jump forward. Let's see if we can finish what else she said here. I'll let it play. Them not to shock you or not to say, "Ooh, I have this brand new piece of knowledge now. God is revealing these things for safety, for protection, and to let us know that the judgment times that come upon us all in the final days are not going to go according to the usual church storyline. You mean the biblical storyline? That's what she says, usual. See, she wants, that's why she wants to bring you esoteric information. She wants to bring you new, 400 new prophecies. It's not, you know, in the end times, it's not going to go according to what the Bible said. You know, the usual church stuff. See how clever this is? Evilly clever. There, this is what God said. Arise and take your message to the nations. Use the tools available to you. Same. This is what God is saying to her. Take your message to the nations. What, via YouTube? Has she gone preaching to the nations? You see, this is also what most of these social media prophets do. They self-testify themselves. Hey guys, let me tell you a real quick prophecy that I got from God. Drew, you're super awesome. Go to all the world and do your awesome stuff. Because you're awesome. And I've selected you awesomely in the awesome category under extra awesome. Go to the nations and tell the people this, that I've selected you and that you're awesome. Thus saith the Lord. This is what they do. Every single one of them do this. I remember being on his back far back with uh, Claire from A Still Small Voice. Claire was a cult leader and in many cases a severe social media bully and she did this all the time the lord this is this this is what claire would sound she was like a 75 year old lady and the lord began speaking oh claire my daughter i long to be with you and i love you tell the people that i have chosen you firsthand and tell them to not resist the truth for you indeed are my chosen vessel. And I love you, and you are set aside. You go to the nations and do and this, this is They all do this. They all do this. It never fails. It is absolutely right on schedule. What you have to say. 
Jesus Christ is coming back. This is what you were born to declare. What you were born to declare. Now, normally I wouldn't think uh, I, I here's the only way I think I could ever say that was like I was born to love Jesus. I was born to preach the gospel. I was born to be a witness. I don't deserve it. I am a sinful creature that Jesus Christ saved with the shedding of his blood and the suffering. I am unworthy, but I was born again of God by the mercy of Jesus Christ. And I don't deserve it. And I will forever praise and glorify God and exalt his mighty name. And I'm not worthy. But here these people get on social media and they're not hum uh, they, they show no humility, no humbleness. All they want to do is convince you that they're prophets and that you shouldn't cross them, you shouldn't test them. And I have all these new words and I'm going to disparage the Bible and let me glorify myself. Let me tell you what God said. He said I was awesome. It's unbelievable. I think so. I believe that all Christians should follow God with all their heart. If you want to follow yourself, or if you want to follow your atheism, or if you want to follow whatever other God excites you, then I'm not going to be the one to argue with you and try to convince you because God is not a cheap commodity that needs to be sold to human beings. Really? Is that the right way to say that? What she's saying is that she's not going to preach the true gospel. And she's using word salad. Her choice of words here is very deceitful. Now, again, this is an example. I'm going to play this again because this is how utterly, dastardly, dastardly what she says. Listen again. If you want to follow yourself, or if you want to follow your atheism, or if you want to follow whatever other God excites you, then I'm not going to be the one to argue with you and try to convince you because God is not a cheap commodity that needs to be sold to human beings. Now, again, her choice of words here is very deceitful. Uh, what she's really talking about is she's not going to preach the gospel. And she, she tries to take, twist it and say, I shouldn't have to sell you, God. I shouldn't, ha which really means I shouldn't have to explain the gospel, even though I'm this high and mighty prophet. God's not a commodity. No, people need to be preached to. People need to be told about God. People have questions, Miss Expert. But you're saying you're not going to do this. And you, and you try to... De so deceitful say God's not a commodity you know but God needs to be by the way Jesus often compared finding the truth to that of a treasure God is I would argue so much vastly more valuable than a commodity he is the ultimate value that you do need to share with men maybe you call it selling but even Jesus told the disciples, come, I'll make you fishers of men. And you preach the God. What? See how evil her face is when she says things like this. I just get such a very witchy, evil feeling from her. Again, I will say, this woman hates humans. She hates humans. You can feel the hate coming. Why wouldn't you want to tell why wouldn't you want to get on the mountaintops and shout the gospel of Jesus Christ to anyone that would listen? And when you do find somebody that has questions or that even challenges you, step up to that challenge. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Answer a thousand questions. If you don't, that person may be on their way to hell for all eternity. Answer as many questions as they have for you. Now, that, I'm not suggesting that you take abuse or get hit, stay there and get hit over the head or, you know, shot at. But look at the, this woman's face. It's, it's, she's disgusted by humans. It's antithetical to the true gospel. 
This is what is missing in the modern church today. Stuff like that. And then I saw a very clear and distinctive image. I saw in the air, so not high in the heavens. Now, I've sped this one up. Here, Here's just, uh, uh, quite frankly, I'm just getting sick, and this has gone on long enough. I want to get to a couple more clips. In this one, she, she I sped up this because it's another long, drawn-out story of Beyonce falling from heaven. She She's just obsessed with Beyonce. Let me see here. Foul, she hit the earth very hard at her neck. Like Laura said, <clears throat> excuse me, and I've often warned about this, that even believers who are walking with the Lord, it is possible for them to be deceived and controlled by gray aliens. That is when they will so there she said that when the gray aliens come, that the power of Jesus Christ will be of none effect. That even if you are walking with Jesus Christ, the aliens can still control you. <laughs> Jeez. Finally hear the words of the Lord. You will prophesy to them concerning the death of Mr. Biden and that Mr. Trump will die also. And it showed me visions of how America will be stunned by the death of these famous people, famous politicians, famous actors, musicians, stars, you name it. It was as if an eraser was wiping out the register of... So here she says there's just a ton of people that are going to die. Um... And it was very, it's very, very disturbing. What I do want to play for you. Hold on a second. So I want you to look at this right here, because I'm not going to, we're running out of time. Uh, as she was giving her warnings about creatures coming upon the earth. Uh, you know what? Let me just play this. I'll just play it. Open that door. It amazes me when people care more about what, who's coming to power and who's next, and we're going to see who, who comes, and then we'll, people care more about that than hearing that 12 and 15 foot and taller things are going to be on the street with us. So I realized the time has come now that God has always told you it is outside for real. And I seemed to snap out of it. And I went to my basics bag and I grabbed it. I added a few more things to it. I grabbed my laptop. I took some water. I put the bag on my back. And then I went down to the street and I went past all those people because the rays were not hitting people, which is why I said earlier, it seems to be a good thing that people came outside because it was those who were in the buildings who were being harmed, et cetera. So there was aliens attacking the earth and apparently they were attacking the people in the buildings the people that came outside were safe all right so they were safe but now listen to this contradiction again having to do with creatures coming on the earth warning here for at least two years that when that darkness come, the, comes the lord says to follow the book of isaiah and shut yourself in your rooms this means that if you are the kind of person who hears the absolute word of God that you are not to go outside and you do go outside. You must assume responsibility for the loss of your life and the loss of whoever's life you will lose when you open that door. When you open that door. So again, contradicting prophecies. There's creatures outside, whether it's mermaids, werewolves, zombies or Nephilim, gray aliens. Yetis, lock yourself inside. And then she tells another story of lizard, 15-foot lizard people attacking, but it was safer that you come outside. So, I, I mean, she can't keep track of her own science fiction. One thing I'll also say about Celestial, she often references the Marvel movies, all the, you know, the, all the Avengers movies, the, uh, what, what is it, the uh, Transformers? Transformers! More than meets the eye. So, always referencing Disney. Always, always. Um, and I'll show you that. I don't know if I want to play this clip right here. This is a clip, and I think we're going to end it on this one. We're going to end it on this one. This is where she's sitting there. She's listening to an audio recording of her 
a previous prophecy from, I, I think it was like a prayer group. She said that this is God talking. And I think this really culminates everything because you're going to hear how filled with hate this woman is. Now, so here, for whatever reason, she's playing it and she's just standing there listening to it. And then you want to say he must come and rule over you. That man will never again. She's talking about Donald Trump. She's, she's saying that God is talking about Donald Trump. All his evil, all his cruelty. He is so guilty, this man. He has done unclean things. He has done unclean things in the closet. And then you want to worship him, America. You want to praise him. You want to lift him up as if he is my son, Jesus. You lift this man up and you cannot lift up the name of the, of the son who died on the cross for you. You lift up your own dirty son from your own dirty country and worship him. But the true son, the son of God, the son of man, the redeemed, among, the one who redeemed men, you don't want to lift him up and you don't want to worship him. And then you want to say he must come and rule over you. That man will never get into the White House again. He is going to die outside in his crimes and in his sin. And when they bury him, your country will shake like an earthquake. Your country will tear into two. Since you love to worship men, I will take... I want to point out something here. We know that this woman is not a prophet. And so we know unequivocally that this is coming from her own heart. Now, I don't necessarily disagree with everything especially the part where this country, many in this country have made Trump a, an idol. But the worst is still coming. But this is not God saying this. This is her. Take away the men that you want to worship. You will not have any gods left. I'm going to carry him. He's never going to enter any White House. He doesn't have any business in the White House. He shouldn't. She, she looks so odd just standing here listening to herself even have been there the first time i was just showing you mercy i was showing you mercy because the other person who wanted to enter she would have destroyed you she would have killed you she would have she's talking about hillary clinton killed your children the way she kills children now she is a murderer she is a human trafficker if i had let her to enter the white house your children would have been going missing from the street because that is what happens when you put evil into positions of power that is what happens when you give murderers a chair to sit on then they begin to murder you and your children. And that is when you will start to cry to me to have mercy on you and tell me, where are my children? Our children are going missing. Our children are being taken from the, tr um, from the street. You were getting ready to elect a known human trafficker. And I showed you mercy by giving you someone else. And then you take this person and you have made him an idol. Will I not kick down that idol? Will I not tear down your idols, America? Will I not leave you with nobody to worship? When I've she, she almost sounds like she's got like a Rasta Jamaican accent. You know, tear down your idol, man. Listen to me, man. I tear down the idol. Nothing wrong with it. I just, I think, I'm not sure where, if she's from America. I can tell you she hates America. She hates American people, too. I've killed everyone. You will remember about Jesus. He is the only one who died and rose from the dead. See, that's a tell right there. He is the only one? Wait a second, isn't Jesus talking? See, that's a, that's a very big tell. This is not God talking. This is celestial talking. He's the only one that rose from the dead. What do you mean? Why wasn't it I? This is supposed to be God, right? Listen. You will remember about Jesus. He is the only one who died and rose from the dead. Very telling. Very telling. This is how you can know. He is the only one. And, and she, she makes other uh, thing, uh, errors like that, too. He is the only one who died and <clears throat> came back. He is the only person who tasted death and came back. I will carry all your idols to their graves, one by one. I am telling you, you will go to funerals in this country until you have no more tears. You will bury them until you can't cry. You will bury them until you become a... <laughs> Look at her face. She digs what she's hearing herself say. This woman hates people. You know, and if she sees this, maybe from my perspective, or you know, at least from because we are testing the spirits to see if this woman's from God, 
there is she is satisfied right now she digs what she hears herself saying she digs it she likes it because she hates and the i think the best way to say it that just as a conclusion is she hates american people it's that true she has you can hear it in her voice because you know that this is not god speaking this is her speaking she has unbridled disdain and outright hatred for people she can't now she might be upset about the whole trump thing i know there's been times when i get upset that people have made trump an idol i don't speak things like this this is a special hatred and look at her look at her eyebrows she's she's digging what she said afraid you will begin to lock your door at night because you will wonder if the spirit of death i lock my door at night anyway and just a just a thought is walking down the street taking people without any order i will take them one by one you will have no body you will bury every do you think god used that did you hear the way that she enunciated that listen to this i want you to listen uh this is god saying you will have nobody listen to the way she says it i will take them one by one you will have no body you you will have no body. That's like like when I get mad sometimes, you know, I'll drag it out and I said, you have got to be kidding me, right? I don't know if God would do that in the word. In the word, I don't know. Can she feel that? Maybe it was all caps like Amanda Grace. I don't know. This is coming right from Celestial. She hates people. Will bury every single famous person that you have worshipped. Beyonce, if I don't put her in the grave, <laughs> there's beyonce again she is obsessed with beyonce but i'll back it up because she uh she says something says something very interesting this here. person that you have worshipped beyonce if i don't put her in the grave then i am not god td jakes all of them i will take she says if i don't put beyonce in the grave then i am not god i think that is so ridiculous it's like, well, if I don't put her in the grave, then I'm not God. Would, would God really say that? It's just curious. Take them away, and then you will see what I said when I said, I am God. Worship me only, and you only, and me only, shall you serve. Listen you like to, to worship men. You are always seeking a new person to bow down to. That's why you build up so much superstars. All right, now listen to the last part of this. This is part of the most disturbing of it all. You build up superstars and then you <clears throat> worship them. You, you create them and then you worship them. Won't they die? If you anger me, won't they all die? Won't I take them all away? So Good grief. Is this Julie Green? Is she, is she sure she didn't pick out one from Julie Green? Only this is on the other side. You know, again, though, that is common, right? So here's what you haven't heard in this rant come out of her my people repent come to the truth of jesus christ wake up out of your slumber pray for one another don't worship idols like that with a tone of voice that's merciful this is a voice of hatred i'm I'm killing everyone. Everyone's dying. I've had it. Now, whether you believe America, for example, will be judged, whether you believe America is uh, the great harlot Babylon, we don't even need to go there. Um, this woman hates people. She hates American people. And there is great hatred and disdain in her tone. We know this isn't God speaking that you can only be ordinary people in this country do you want me to take away all your bright stars until you have nothing left you won't repent you are so sinful you are so unclean so foul so hateful in my eyes i hate you because you have ha oh, wait. hated me first so she says i hate you because you have hated me first not everybody in america hates god this is sort of a blanket statement, isn't it? There are millions in this country 
that love Jesus Christ and serve him in truth and sincerity. Millions. And there are, there is hope for so many others to come to Jesus Christ. But it's almost done. It's almost done. Listen to this. I hate you, America, because you hate me. You hate me, and you hate my laws, and you hate my heart, and you hate my goodness, and you despise my mercy, and you spit on my prophets, and you crucify my messengers. I haven't seen any messengers crucified lately. Is that a play on words? I have not spit on it. We had plenty of, you know, me and Alabama Woodsman were down in Florida. We, we could have spit on Julie Green. We could have spit on Timothy Dixon. We didn't. I, I, don't, I don't even know anybody that has ever, in these modern times, spit on a prophet. I don't know. I, I don't know if, if she's ever been spit on, but we know she's not a prophet. <clears throat> I hate you. So there was a long pause, and that's where it ends. She said, I hate you. And then I think she did say, because you've hated me first. But, so, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know just in the sense that it makes me very sad. I want to conclude this. And here's, here's what I'm going to say. The primary focus of Celestial and this channel that she has, uh, Master's Voice Prophecy Blog, the primary focus of her channel is not the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's not the true gospel. The focus of her channel is overwhelmingly Celestial's new prophecies, these new words of God. Now, one thing I will say about Celestial, she is a, uh, at times, she's a very good speaker. She seems very educated. She seems um, uh, very, you know, well-to-do in that sense. I know she lives in New York. Um, she's very good at presenting herself as an authority figure. And this is a very good quality to have when you're setting yourself up as a prophet she's good at presenting herself as an authority figure she is a, what i would say is a capable actor and this is what it takes to be a social media prophet acting skills cue the cat cur quote but ask yourself this you listening to this as a christian follower of jesus christ do you need anything apart from this for your faith. Is it important that you know about the casting couch in Hollywood or that the people in Hollywood have butt sex or that blood is being on the privates of these Hollywood music industry people? Is that pertinent to your faith? Do you need to know how to get zombie defense? Or can you find everything right here? I think you can. Now here's where, this is where I, I kind of want to leave this tonight. Celestial is drawing you away from this because this is what social media prophets do. Let me come out of this here. Social media prophets draw you away from this. Why? Well, how do you, what do you mean, Drew? How, do, how, how does that happen? Well, I got to... When you're all of a sudden occupied with Celestial's 400 prophecies with more to come, when you should be studying this, you see what I'm saying? You should be studying the holy, true holy word of God. And now... Your online celestial's got a new prophecy out, and I need to see that because the zombies are coming, and I, I need to get that defense, my my bug out bag, 
I need to get, I need to make sure that I put some zombie spray in there. Or the Chimura, the Chimuras, Chimeras are coming. The mermaids are going to be... I, I didn't even play you one clip where she says that... <sighs> that these creatures that attack humans are going to roll them up into meatballs and basically eat them. I, I couldn't, I just, I couldn't listen to any more. So I, I, I want to... Now, now certainly, pray. Pray for Celestial. But... Here, here's what I can tell you. Here's what I can tell you. There will be threats to my life. There will be pronouncements of death for daring to touch God's anointed. Um, I would love to see her answer for this, but I, I don't know that she would even feel bad for seeing this. She thinks she's, she digs what she says. And I will tell you that if she is getting these dreams she's from, from somewhere, she's not getting them from God. I don't think God would show any man, and I say this facetiously, I don't think God would show any man or woman porn. Pornographic. Here, watch this. You must know what takes place in the toilet of America, which is Hollywood. Why? Why do we need to know what's happening in the toilet? We don't need to know what's happening in the toilet. Focus on preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Give the gospel of Jesus Christ. Also, uh, it disturbs me that she she didn't care. She's annoyed that people have more than one question. If you don't understand God, or if you refuse to come to Jesus Christ after the first question, you're done. Done for eternity. I, I want to share this to you, with you also. There have been, and I know Alabama Woodsman, Simon, J.C., Dave... Everybody who has witnessed to somebody, did you witness to them on the first time they came to Christ? In many cases, there have been people that witnessed to people over the course of years. But they didn't give up and they prayed for them. Through tears and anguish, many years, and they, and they came to Jesus Christ. We don't give up on people. We don't get annoyed with people because they have questions. This woman does. And so you can, you can know that she may think she's all that. She may have, and she does have a very high opinion of herself. But I don't know about you. Maybe, maybe some of you might give up on people. I won't. I talk to people. I've talked to people. I, I mentioned before with Claire Dubois from A Still Small Voice, there was a guy that came out of her cult, man, who I went round and round with for months. And then one day, the, just the power of the Holy Spirit, the truth of the gospel hit him and he started sobbing. And he, he came out of that cult. And he came back to the truth of Jesus Christ because, I don't know, we don't give up on people. And like I said, there are times you don't have to take abuse if you're being trolled. But if somebody has genuine questions, even, if, even to the point of hostility, as long as they're willing to listen and engage, I would keep talking to them forever. As long as they, I've got a, a friend that I grew up with, an atheist friend who uh, I went to kindergarten with that we still talk. And I'm still hopeful that he'll come to the gospel of Jesus Christ and the truth. Why? Here's, listen to me. Why? Because I don't want him to go to hell. I don't want anyone to go to hell. This is eternity. People don't take this seriously. I could give a good, you know what, about your stupid YouTube channel and your status as a prophet. People are going to hell. Don't ever give up on them if you can. She's got people running around these 400 new prophecies and occupying their time. 
And people get drawn away from the true word of God. They're not studying the true word of God because this is funner. This is new. I've got to get ready for the aliens and the lizard people. Now, I'm not saying that that stuff won't happen, but that's all speculation. We don't know. There's a good chance that something like that may happen, but it's not the word of God. It's not in the word of God. But she says it is. She's saying it's thus saith the Lord. And I'm sorry, I just, no. If anybody is scared of Wendigos and mermaids and lizard people and aliens and yetis, cry out to Jesus. Go to Jesus. Go to his word. Get into the word of God. May the Holy Spirit fall upon you in great comfort. But in the meantime, as men, stand up and quit you like men. Stand up and quit you like men. Whatever may come, whatever, we may die. Die in Christ. But quit you like men. This country is filled with a bunch of squishies. Squishy, squishy men. Stand up and be men. Whatever may come, we stand in the truth of Jesus Christ according to this word, not according to social media prophets. So I'm going to pray. We're going to close this out. And certainly not, probably not the, the last we'll hear of this. I apologize for being all over at, at the front of this. It's been a very long week for me. So I do appreciate your patience. Don't hold it against me. I'll try to continually improve. Bunch of squ- <laughs> Here's Eric. Bunch of squishy men. We got to pray for that men will start to be men again. I, I, I was born in the 60s, man. I remember we at least, thank God, I was in a time where men were men. My neighbor, my neighbor caught me misbehaving. That guy would bust a two by four over my behind and I probably deserved it. Now you can't look at your neighbors. Your neighbors, I don't know. It's, it's just weird. I hear stories. You know, there, there's actually a TV show on uh, on TV called "Fear the, Fear Thy Neighbor" or something like that. Just horrible stories. People are just mean and cruel and all that stuff. But pray for uh, pray for all this. Pray that men would be men. Stand up and be men. Be manly men in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's go to prayer as we close this down. I'm not going to do a long prayer tonight. I'll try to come out throughout the week and do, a, do another live stream. Pray that I can. So, Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. The first thing I want to do is I want to pray for Celestial. I pray, Father, for the power of your Holy Spirit to fall upon her, to convict her for the truth. And whatever is feeding her these stories, God, I ask in Jesus Christ's name, I pray in Jesus Christ's name that she would come away from this. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that celestial, that Father, that you would fill her heart with love for her mankind, for her fellow mankind, that she would care about witnessing the gospel, that she would care deeply about spreading the love of Jesus Christ to other humans in this earth. I pray that she would stop talking about this perverted porn and I pray that she would take these other videos down for they serve no purpose. It edifies no one. But we do pray for celestial God in Jesus Christ's name. I pray she would stop falsely prophesying and speaking things, Lord, that you have not spoken. But I pray she would repent and shut this thing down. And come to the truth of Jesus Christ to sit in those pews at our church and to learn the word of God and to stop lying in your name, Jesus. Jesus, thank you that you died for our sins. Thank you for your sacrifice. And I pray the power and the might of your Holy Spirit on, on, upon everyone here. And I pray for your salvation, Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for your holy word. Your word is is a light unto my path. It is my foundation. It is our foundation. Your word is perfect. We love it. We will follow it, Lord. Help us to not be deceived or drawn off the path by other false prophets and false prophecies. 
I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray for solid meat of the Holy Word. Glory to you, God. We praise your holy name for your holy word. And so I pray for my brothers and sisters. God bless this live stream. In Jesus Christ's name. And then we want to pray for the, the followers of these false prophets, Lord. Remove the scales from their eyes and bring them out of this nonsense, Lord. Out of this social media narcissistic nonsense. I pray for the power of God Almighty in the name of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit to fall upon all these parties. Bring us all under the truth and ser- the truth of Jesus Christ and to serve him in sincerity according to thy holy word and protect us from evil, protect us from witchcraft, protect us from this esoteric secret society witch satanic doctrines that they're trying to bring in, God. And let us go forth boldly and with, the, with and in the strength of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. And we love you, God. We pray for the souls of men. God, we pray for the souls of men in Jesus Christ's name. And we thank you, Lord. Glory to you, Jesus. We exalt thine mighty name. And we love you. And we praise you. We praise you, Jesus Christ, and we give thanks unto you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. All right, so that's where we're going to stop it. So thanks for joining me. I know this went long. So I'll just close it down. God bless you guys. Thanks for uh, staying with me this long. And we will see you uh, a little bit later. Thanks.